What's up guys? Thanks for joining another episode of Cars, Bikes and Coffee. I am Kurt and we are working on a 1992 Nissan 300ZX twin turbo. And in the last episode, we went and started working on the timing belt or the 120,000 mile service. So we need to finish that up. And then we're gonna start working on a few other things so we can get this back on the road. Stay tuned. So we went through and I cleaned up the entire front of the engine, replaced the cam seals, the crankshaft seals, put on a new crank sprocket, tensioner, new water pump, new belt of course, and then we installed the AMS overdrive and underdrive pulleys, which are aluminum, and just take a look at this. This came out great. You can see here, this is the stock crankshaft pulley at 13 pounds, nine ounces. And the new AMS crankshaft pulley is 28 ounces. All right, so now that we have the 120,000 mile service done and we've got all our belts in place and we'll put our radiator back in once we do a few more bits of work in the engine bay, I wanna take the intake manifold off. We need to replace the master cylinder and as well, I'm gonna start taking the wheels off completely instead of just this one, because we've got new tires coming. So we'll get those off and then probably start working eventually on cleaning up the calipers and the brake rotors on the front and back. So let's get into it. And we got most of this unhooked because of working on the timing belt. Got to pull some of the spark plugs. So some of this should come out fairly. All right. After all of that, we should be able to get this fold out. All right. All right, so we've got the intake manifold off and just take a look how corroded, oxidized and dirty underneath is. Uh, so we we'll want to make sure we fill in the intake ports with some towels and just go ahead and also might as well take a look inside of them. Get out the borescope, look into the cylinders, look into the intake runners and see what the internals look like. But we finally got that off. All right, so now that we have some access to some of the parts of the internals, what I wanna do is take this endoscope and take a look inside the cylinders and as well inside the intake plenum. And we're using the Depstex DS580 and I'll leave a link below for this one. All right, so we're gonna use our endoscope and we're gonna take a look at our valves. Go ahead and record this. Valves look really good. Then what we'll do is send it down one of the cylinders. And on this one, we can switch to the side camera take a look at that cross hatch let's record that these walls look really good you can move and see the valves are nice and closed so now what i'm going to do i'm going to go through each of the cylinders and each of the intake runners and take a look and make sure we are all good if there's any issues of course i'll share it so now that we've taken a look at everything and everything is looking actually really great which is good news what I wanna do is go through and order some new hoses for the PCV, the idle air, and as well, clean up these old dry rotted wire casings. And there's a few harnesses that are broken, especially for the, for the coil pack. Um, the injector harnesses seem to be good, so we're good there. So gonna make an order, get those parts in, and then we'll start working on cleaning this up and making it look a lot better. All right, so now that we've gone through this stuff, now I want to concentrate on getting the brake and the rotors off and also the master cylinder. This will open up some room in here so we can clean 
and of course we need to replace it anyways so now's a good time to do it and also to mention the reason why i'm taking all this stuff off and not just focusing on one part is it's winter time it's raining off and on it's cold so i want to do a lot of this work while it is cold outside or wet and i can do it all in the garage in the shop so first we're going to drain the brake fluid Now that we've got most of the brake fluid drained, what we're going to do is go and take off the calipers and then drain the lines from there. And we're going to go around and do all the wheels. So now that we have the front off, now we're going to get the back off. And those are the cutest little brake pads I've ever seen. All right, so now what we can do is go ahead and pull the rotor off and we're just gonna use some M8 bolts in these threaded portions here. And I did spray this down with some PB blaster just to soak. I'm just gonna tighten these up one by one and then just alternate. There we go, that easy. All right, so now what we're gonna do is go ahead and get the master cylinder out. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take a rag and stick it underneath. That way, when we take off the lines, if any of the leftover fluid is in here, it won't drip on the paint or other parts. It'll just drip on the rag. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen up these sides. Also undo this plug. We're just gonna loosen up the bolts on the brake booster. Now we're gonna undo our brake lines. And with our brake lines off, we now can undo the nuts holding the master cylinder to the brake booster. Now that you have the nuts in done, we can go ahead and take the master cylinder out and we just wanna be extra careful that we don't drip any of the brake fluid on the car, on the paint, and there we go. So we got off the parts that we need to kind of clean up, repair, and get ready for reinstall. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a list of the things I need to order, such as some of these harnesses, uh, the coolant lines, get those in silicone, and the vacuum lines as well. That way we can do the uh, delete of the coolant under the plenum. And so I think that's gonna call it for today getting kind of cold and as well with all those parts off we can spend our time in the garage where it's a little warmer so thanks so much for watching if you do like what you see don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and thank you for all those that have and stuck around and watched all these processes of these cars so we'll see you on the next one